Wow. My uh, work computer is currently booting up over there. Um, and I'm all groggy because... I've been awake for a little bit, but I this this couldn't this couldn't wait. Now, for those who are seeing it, um, this got posted to the Telegram group about a week ago, and you're seeing it now on YouTube. But the Telegram group they saw it the morning that it happened. Um. My wife and I have this have this um I don't want to call it practice because it is not practice. I let's call it a, a discipline. My wife and I have this discipline, and the discipline is specific because we are specifically going to God in prayer for something that is make something that makes sense to God. Let's a lot more than it makes sense to us. So at 257, see if I can find it on my phone. And will it show up right way? Nope. Give me one moment here. There. We have an alarm for 257. And I'll switch it back now. But at 2.57, an alarm goes off. We get up. We at least wake up. Maybe we might not get up off the bed. But we get up and we pray. We're praying in tongues. And the reason that we're praying in tongues is because we are praying in agreement with God. We may not know why we're praying. Sometimes it's for what we are going through. But most of the time, we, as Holy Spirit has revealed to us, we are the voice of agreement for those who are praying and asking God to move on their behalf. They just need one other voice to speak in agreement, and that's our voice. Pretty wild stuff. One moment here. So then, um, this morning, praying, and used to about 3.20, 3.30, I got to go to the bathroom because, you know, got to stay regular. And so I feel an urgency. I didn't tell my wife this part. I felt an urgency to get back in the room. So I'm back in the room. And... Um, I turn it on. I have two monitors, one of them being a uh, TV. But um, get back into the room, and I, I'm thinking I should, you know, lay down. I don't know what's going on, but it's just this heaviness to get flat. So I laid on the bed, and no sooner had I laid on the bed, I could feel my soul slipping out of my body. I continue to pray. Now, my now he is just one of the few times that I was praying in tongues, excuse me, praying in tongues, and it was coming from my spirit into my body. My soul wasn't there. I was, I went to a completely different realm. And in this realm, I saw myself just going up. I went up to the roof, and I went up higher and higher. And I could see the, the downtown of Raleigh and all the little twinkling lights of the neighborhood around us. And it got higher and higher, and pretty soon I could see the 
big old lights of New York and the lights of Miami and a bunch of cities in between. And it got smaller and smaller pretty soon. I could see the earth and it was big. And then the earth itself was getting smaller and smaller. And then I realized that I am in what looks like a uh, carriage. It's the only way I can think of it because there's, there's a railing here, a railing here. And I look to my left, and there's a seat there that is the, the – I'll just put it this way. The, the hip area was larger than mine, and I looked, and Tanisha's name was written on the seat. So, so I, I, I get up, and I look at my own, and my name in that seat. What in the world? What's going on? So, at this point, I'm I'm feeling myself not just not so much just going up, but now I'm going this way, and I'm going up and up and up and up. Finally, I see these two gates open up, gigantic courtroom. I mean, just absolutely gigantic. It looked like it could hold 10,000 on the prosecutor side and 10,000 on the defense side. It was huge. And much to my surprise, as I was passing out over the gallery of those that were in the like waiting room, I heard thousands and thousands of people pray it. And my little chariot, whatever it was, carriage, I don't know, came and rested on the prosecutor side. What? You see, this thing of courtroom of heaven, there is the accuser, and then there is you. The accuser has whatever he's talking about, and you are, are agreeing because that's how God wrote it. But I was on the spot where the accuser was. I look across the aisle. There's my accuser, terrified. It's one of the very few times I've ever seen the serpent terrified. And I'm just thinking, what is going on? My chair should be over there. I should just push my chair. And as I'm pushing the chair across the aisle, door opens. Judge enters the room and sits down. But I'm in the middle of pushing this, this chair across the aisle. He says, son, what you doing? I said, uh, uh. Well, I'm so used to being the one that's agreeing to the accusations. He says, yes, good. I'm glad you're used to it. And an angel just comes by with a finger, pushes the chair back over. And the judge of all, he's, he looks me in the eye. He says, today, we have a judgment. I said, okay, and all, I'm ready to agree. And he says, you're the reason that there's a judgment. I said, oh, my goodness, what did I do wrong? He says, no. You are the reason that the judgment is judging for the, for the prosecutor. You are the prosecutor. And I look over at the accuser. I look, I, I look at the judge. I look back. I look back at the judge and back at the accuser. I was like, don't have to tell me twice. I get back into the seat. I sit down. And uh, this bailiff takes a little piece of paper. Just a little piece of paper. And as he takes a little bit, bit of, little bitty piece of paper and takes it up to God, it becomes a huge volume. I'm like, what? And the judge picks up the top sheaf, and he's like, the judge, the, the, the um, 
court of heaven hears the case of Norm and Tunisia against the serpent and seeds. A serpent is looking like it wants to die right then and there. He picks up the second sheaf. He says, the, the judgment of the court. He looks over to the uh, serpent and he says, all those who have been attacking by dreams, by familiar spirit, by any means necessary, the judgment here and now from the court of heaven is cease and submit. And here's here's it's the one time I actually one of the few times I've actually seen the judge smile. He looks at the looks at the serpent, he looks back at me, looks at the serpent, he and then he, as he's looking back at me, he gets, kind of gets this smile. He says, what is your answer? The serpent, serpent says, I would rather die than agree to that. God says, all right, noted. Do you have any on your side that will answer to the charge the charge here was for wrongfully attacking the saints the saints being norm and antonisha for wrongfully attacking the saints the judgment is cease and submit now is there anyone who wants to agree that they have been wrongfully attacking Norman Tunisia. The serpent says, I would rather die than admit that or, or agree to that. God says, okay. Judgment for the for the prosecutor. Anytime that the familiars come to you with dreams, the pr the true source will be revealed. Boom. My carriage lifts up with me just kind of standing and I kind of sit down. And as it's turning, the counselor who I've never seen, he says, you need to know why. And I said, okay. He says, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of Christians who don't agree and don't believe that the court of heaven exists. And the enemy tries to stir up arguments between those who believe it exists versus those who've been in it. Do not participate in any argument about the existence of the court of heaven. It will count against you. I said, okay. He says, all of the people who don't believe in the court of heaven, but have been praying earnestly for their loved ones. All of their prayers, plus all of your prayers, is what wrote out the case notes for the verdict this morning. Everybody praying about the same thing. But a few who hear the voice to come up into a court and agree with the adversary until there is nothing standing against them. At that point, now you join the prosecutor side. And I'm out of the courtroom. The Great big gates are closing, and I am, I am now descending this way, and it gets to the point where I'm dropping. It's not like dropping like out of out of a plane, like I'm skydiving. I'm dropping at a fairly good rate, but not 
not drastic. And um, got to got to write something here where I, I have the. lettering in front of me I not not as likely to mess it up there we go gotta do one little bit of plug in here There it goes. And I get back down and I tell my wife something huge happened. And she starts just looking at her phone. I said, put your phone down. This is really important. So I told her how it all comes together. Those who don't believe in the court of heaven but are praying for their loved ones, those who do believe in the court of heaven and are actively agreeing on every accusation until there is no other accusation. In it. And now they're on the side of the prosecutor and God is reading out judgments based off of the prayers that we are praying against the serpent and his seed. And serpent and sea will never act, will never want to agree because that would mean it gets ruled in our favor. Well, too bad. The moment that a, that there is no person to answer the accusation of God, then there is a ju judgment that happens instantly for the prosecutor. In this case, it was my wife and I. So, this testimony is about going so hard. It is 7th of June. This is a testimony about going a little more than a month, praying at the midnight, at the 3 o'clock hour, and God answering prayers really, really fast. And God remaking and remolding the life of the of the uh, roommate so fast. We've been we've been going through the mud of prayer for eleven months. Now, when we are doing prayer because it makes sense to God, He's doing. In a matter of a month, what we had been waiting on him to do for 11. Because we're doing our part. So this is a bit of an, an encouragement and a how-to for those who are not quite sure how this thing of agreeing with the adversary works or what its actual outcome looks like. I'll see y'all in, in a live stream at some point.